Hello, in this video or video series, I'm going to show you how to make your own fortune telling app. First, you're going to open up Android Studio like so, and click start a new Android Studio project. And you're going to call that project whatever you want, you know, pertaining to fortune telling. So uh, let's just say uh, your fortune. So we got our application name, which is your fortune, company domain, which would be your website basically. Mine is John Tutorials, package name, basically uh, your domain plus your fortune but your domain's backwards. And then we have the directory, which you know changes per computer and per person. I'm using a Mac currently, and it's stored in users, Android Studio, Desktop, and Your Fortune. And you can click Next, and you'll see a little Target Android Devices screen. And we'll select Android 15 4.0.3, and click Next. Then we can select Blank Activity, and we can start to name our stuff. Now usually main activity would be the first activity, but I'm going to make for this app the first activity a startup screen. So we're just going to call it startup and we can set the layout activity, layout name to activity startup. For me, because I don't like seeing this whole word, I usually do just A and then underscore startup or whatever it is, but we probably should call it normally activity startup. And we're going to call it title startup and then menu startup. Then we can click finish and wait for that to build. The project has finally been created and we get some rendering problems on our first try. Basically it just tells us this is a common bug and they know about it so for now just try to rebuild the project and see if that fixes the issue. So just click rebuild right here where it says or if you can't find this go up to build and then rebuild project. Obviously mine's gray because it's rebuilding currently. I had to rebuild it twice actually before it started to work but here it is. This is what it would look like running on a device. This is so what I'm gonna do first is set up this project in GitHub so that uh, you guys can all access it. You could do this on your machine if you would like to just so you can understand how GitHub works but you can skip this little part of the video if you want to. So for to enable GitHub integration, just go up to VCS and enable version control integration. And here you're going to select Git, click OK, and then go back to VCS and go to import, or I mean share project on GitHub. You will need a GitHub account for this, obviously. Now here it tells us our repository name cannot contain a space. So we're going to go your underscore fortune and say this is an example app for YouTube and click share. Here it tells us, you know, what all do I want to share? Hopefully I have no files in here that I don't want shared because I have passwords and personal information. Assuming that's true, I'm going to leave this as initial commit and click OK. If there is something that does have a password that is um, only for you to see, you do not want to share that file so you can uncheck it. But as you can see, it's been shared. So if I jump over here into GitHub on the internet, and I'm just going to refresh the page real quick. Hopefully, I'll be able to see my repository. And here it is. And there we go. So now we can go into the app, into source, into main, and into res. And we find all our files here. We can go back out and go to the Java files and see our Java files, but that's just so you can share it in GitHub. That way you can edit it even online, because I could go over here and click edit and start changing this, which I will eventually. Now what we're gonna do is go all the way down the hierarchy, starting from app, make sure we have Android selected here. We're gonna go to app, open that, go to res, open that, go down to values, open it, and go to strings, double click on that, and you will see app name, hello world, and action strings. We don't really need those yet, but we'll delete that in a second. And we're going to add a couple lines. We're going to need string name equals instructions, and then your instructions for the app. So it'd be uh, thinking of a yes or no question, and then you click the button for your answer. We're also going to need uh, an example string for am I cool, am I smart, you know, that's the kind of questions we're thinking. We're also going to need an answer text and a answer button, a 
title activity startup and a begin having fun and then we can go up here we will need action settings probably we do not need hello world and app name we do need now we need to go up the hierarchy just a little bit up to layout and we're going to open that and we'll see activity startup .xml. double click on that and this will open up or this will open up just click the text for now we will work on the design um, if you want to see a little preview you can click this little preview button over here I know yours is not green that's just because I added this Android background equals that and that turns the background green um, so we're gonna need a few add a few lines here to get the layout correct first we're gonna need a text view specifying the instructions and since we've already used a string that has instructions in the string file over here we're all good we're also going to need to have a answer text which is just going to be like what the answer is for the question you know like yes no maybe whatever it's going to be blank on your screen that's supposed to be like that just leave it like that also we will need a begin button as you can see it is just showing up on the screen over here and lastly we're going to need a text view so we can see an example of what we're talking about. And also, we do not need this hello world anymore. I don't know why I neglected to delete that, but you can delete that now. And there we go. That's what we're looking for. And that's how to make the startup activity. Next, we're going to work on the Java startup file that we created earlier. So to do that, we're going to go up the directory. We can shut down res because we don't need that for a while and open up Java and open up the top one. It'll be com dot whatever your domain is and your fortune, not the test one. Don't do that. It's completely different. So double click on that and you'll see startup or whatever you call it originally when we first created the project. Now you'll see this screen here and we have to make a few changes to this. First, our imports need to change for sure. So we're going to add these imports over here and change them like so. We also can change this here to activity and change this from activity main to activity and startup. That should go purple, there we go. We need this button begin equals button find view by r.id and as you can see in our activity startup that we created a second ago where we have this button, that's what we're referencing. We're saying when we click that button this button right here we start a new activity which we do that in this little section here and the rest of this can be left alone so just to recap we added a few imports we specified a button we made a method using that button that we created and we added function to that method we're now going to create our second activity which will be our main activity as you can see here if this is red for you, don't worry, it's red for me. The reason it's red is because there's no such thing as main activity.class. That's what we're about to create. So go up to File. If you're on Mac, it'll be in this bar or in Windows. I imagine it's somewhere in here. So File, go to New, not New Project, but go down to Activity and Blank Activity. Here we're going to say Main Activity, or we could do something more informative like we're going to turn it into fortune activity although I shouldn't put a space in there I can't put a space in there and we're gonna make the layout name activity fortune and the title fortune activity menu resource name menu fortune we are going to specify an higher hierarchical parent excuse me and the package name will be the same and we can click finish and we'll wait for this to create itself there we go. This is prompting us if we want to add this to our Git, GitHub, and for now we do. So we're going to click OK. But you know, if we just created a file with passwords or personal information, obviously we do want to uncheck the boxes. Pretty self explanatory. What we're going to do now is go to our Fortune Activity layout that we just created. And we can see it's just a plain hello world. And we're going to do some remodeling with that. This is what you should type out or you'll be able to access it from GitHub once this video is uploaded. So as you can see we have a few boxes. First we have instructions telling you what's going on. Then we have a text view which has answer text 
So up somewhere in here, it'll start saying the answer to whatever question we have. Here we have an answer button, which is, uh, you'll, you'll think of your question, then you click the button. And then up here, in this space here, it'll tell you the answer. And we also have a text view for the example. Now what we're going to do is go up to this play button here. Actually, let's check out this error first. And we're going to see that main activity is still highlighted in red. Obviously, we're going to fix that because we decided not to name our activity main activity, but instead we decided to make it fortune activity. So we're going to change that there. Now it's no longer in red, so now you can feel better about yourself now that you know you did nothing wrong. So now we can click play, and we're going to run it on a device or an emulator, depending on what you have. I personally have an emulator and a phone, but the phone is much, much faster. This has finally come up. And we can choose whether or not to launch an emulator, like so, or to choose a running device. So you can see here we do have the app running. We can click here to begin having fun. And as you can see, we have a click me button, which apparently does not work. So we're going to go back into the code and fix that. So what was happening? Why did it not work? Well, as you saw in that little short video of our, my phone, we kept on clicking the click me button, but nothing happened. Well, that's because we never set anything up to happen. So what we're going to want to do is go up here to Java, go to Fortune Activity, and add a few lines in here. Let's open up import so we can see that. Let's add, and you see all this stuff here that's red. Well, that is an issue. We're just going to, we could manually import each thing like this, like Android, and dot view and like that kind of thing or another easier much easier way to do it is just kind of staying here moving your mouse around it'll say android.widget.textview and click option and then enter and then it'll add that import up here as you can see android.widget.textview has been added here it says android.widget.button click enter again option enter i mean and it'll pop up there also and we can just keep doing that for all of these. You will need to make sure you have all these imports here and make sure that nothing here is in red. As you can see, there is something still in red. It's activity main, and that's because that's not the right activity. So we're gonna change this from activity main to activity fortune because that's the one that corresponds with this. And so basically, let's check out what this thing does. We're gonna create a button here I mean, sorry, I'm, we're going to do a text view, which will change based on our button. So we also create our button here. And we create some function here. Basically, when we click that button, it sets the text that we created here, which is this blank space in the middle that you guys are probably wondering about. And it sets that text to one of these answers. So like when we ask a question, we click the button, and then one of these answers gets uh, put up there. I have added a lot. You can add more to this list. You could do whatever you want here. And, you know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Also, we have this little thing that it might be a little confusing for some. Basically, we're making a random number, and we're making that random number an integer. And to find that number, we're taking uh, all these answers here stored in this array, uh, and we're finding the length of that. And we're going to multiply that length by a random number, which we created here. And then right below that, we're setting the text that goes in the middle, right in here. We're setting that text to answers, which is this, random. So a random one of these. That's how that works. So now we're going to go to VCS, the changes that we have made. So we're going to commit changes, and we're going to select exactly what we want to commit. We want to commit everything for now. We'll say setting up. You can change this to whatever you want, but I'm going to say it's setting up because that's what I'm doing actually. And we'll do commit and push. Well, we tried to commit and push, but it would not let us because it found some errors. We could still do it, but we don't want to put up errors. So let's review the code, see what we did wrong. It opens up our code analysis we find that we have an empty body here. Uh, 
So let's figure out what happened. Basically, we set answer text blank because you know if you haven't asked a question yet, it shouldn't tell you an answer. It just doesn't like that. It's not an error, just a warning. So we're gonna go back up here and commit the changes again because it turns out there isn't really anything wrong. It just didn't understand what we were trying to do here. And I'm gonna add my email in here. You can email this email anytime if you have any questions about anything going on, or you can use the comments in the video description. The name is Android Studio. There we go, set and commit. We're gonna click push. Now it says push is successful. So let's open up Chrome again. And hopefully we should see the entire project completely updated. So that way when you guys access this video, I'll have a link to this in the description and you can see all the code. So you don't have to type it all out if you don't want to. I would recommend doing that because you can get a feel for what's going on. And if you make a typo, you can learn from your own mistake by figuring out what the problem is and fixing it yourself. But that's just what I would do. So you can see we have plenty of files here. Go down to values, see our strings. There we go. So everything's up to date. A couple more things that I want to do. Um, you can see this MIP map. We're going to change, we're going to go in here. We see our IC launcher. And we have several icons here. We're going to change this to something custom in one second. We're going to change the application icon. So what we want to do is go to MIP map. Not sure if I'm saying that correctly right click on it and go down to reveal and finder or open and explore or whatever it is on windows and we'll click reveal and finder then it'll open up here now we can see our mipmap.xxhdpi basically that's an extra large high def pixel density or i'm sure it's not density but i just can't think of the word at this moment and we have about four of these here just like for each screen size we got like small or really small, small, large, normal, something like that. Uh, those are the size of images we're using. So you could cheat and just throw in a random file, and it'll probably um, scale it down to each a uh, to each screen size when it's actually built. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna go down to my original version of this app that I built myself a while ago and go to res and we'll see and the old version uh, before Android Studio was out we had Eclipse and you can see the file names are a little bit different basically these are all the exact same files the IC launcher and every single one of these it doesn't have to be named IC launcher but if you change it you'll have to change it in the manifest so I'm just going to copy the IC launcher and which you can use pretty much any image as long as it's the right size. I think it's 512 by 512. And we're going to copy and paste that into each of these. As you can see, there's already one here. I don't really care for that. That has nothing to do with our app. Uh, the reason it's an A for me is because originally I called it Answers, but we're just going to call it Fortune from now on. So you could change it to an F. I just created this in GIMP. Replace that there and keep replacing all these. Assuming everything is right this time, we're going to go ahead and commit changes again for the last time. And instead of setting up, we're going to say we change the icon. And then we can click commit and commit and push. And now for the last time, we are going to run our application on a device or emulator. I'm going to use my phone again. We can click here to begin having fun. And click, click me when we ask a question like, is John's Android Security Tutorials the best tutorials in the world? And it says maybe. Maybe. Are you serious? Nope. You gotta be kidding. Yes, yes, yes. Now that's what we're talking about. So even the app that's doing it by random knows that John's Android Studio, Android Studio Tutorials is the best in the world. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.